You gotta be kidding me! Hey, what's going on YouTube? We are back at it again today with another Guardian Druid Guide. This time we're going to be taking a look at something that has been highly requested on the stream, and that is weaving. And no, we're not talking about textiles or any of that bullshit. What we are talking about is taking different talents and abilities that are more typical of a different role than you chose in the group. For instance, throwing out heals with resto affinity or maybe going feral or boom chicken to lay some extra dots on the target. None of these concepts are specific to druids. However, due to our affinity talents, we tend to have a higher proclivity to mix it up pretty much across all content. The concept is simple. The execution takes some practice. This guide is going to show you what buttons to hit to help set you up for a successful weaving opportunity and the buttons to hit therein. Let's get into it. Before we get started, I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is my Twitch stream. The kindness and generosity of the Rage Nation is the only reason I'm able to make the content that I do, so thank you guys. Again, I want to reiterate, weaving is not something that is exclusive to druids. Any class that has the ability to talent into abilities that are atypical to their assumed role, they can weave. For instance, Retribution Paladins healing through Word of Glories, or Mistweaver Monk's Fist Weaving, and those are just to name a couple. Druid Affinities, however, take the concept of weaving and elevate it to an art form that has come to be expected of those who want to graduate into higher level keys. I'm here today to give you some of the tips and tricks I use to successfully weave in my dungeon groups. As a disclaimer, most pugs won't even recognize and surely won't appreciate your unbelievably Quaker level weaving. Do it anyways. We're here to better ourselves, not them. First off, as a Guardian Druid, I almost always go Resto Affinity. This expansion has thrown at us some of the most challenging base level content we've seen in quite some time for retail, and the progression community is thanking them for the challenge. Mostly. Stacked on top of that, most if not all healers are suffering from a lack of secondary stats, which we regularly see in early patches as they work diligently to get their BIS pieces of gear. Because of all that, it makes it hard as a tank to justify taking any abilities that don't contribute to our overall survival. However, Resto Affinity has proven to come in clutch in those situations where healers really start to sweat. However, if you choose to run a more aggressive build, planning for damage weaving via Feral or Balance Affinity, just replace the situations I use Ursul's Vortex for Typhoon or Incapacitating Roar. Now obviously as a bear tank we can't swap out a bear form while taking hits without getting absolutely squished. This means you need to look out for two different scenarios. Scenario 1, you're tanking on one main target such as a boss and he begins to channel or cast that isn't directly dealing damage to just you. In this scenario you can swap in and out of bear form as long as the cast or channel persists. You need to be sure that you can hop back into bear form at the last second and realize you won't have defensives rolling if a big hit is dealt out immediately thereafter, so take defensive cooldowns available into consideration before you weave. Scenario 2 is when you're fighting a pack of CCable mobs that specifically deal melee damage to the tank or casters that randomly target your party. In this situation, you can Ursul's Typhoon or Incapacitating Roar to break the combat for a second, then hit Dash, Stampeding Roar, or Tiger Dash to displace yourself from that combat, allowing you to either heal yourself up, cast ranged abilities on the party, or just slowly move a group over to your next destination for a more opportune spawning of Prideful. To be honest with you, that really is the baseline of weaving. However, there is a lot of other utility weaving that Guardian Druids can do all while in bear form that I think it's important to take note of if you want to push higher keys. We will call these the big brain plays. Before we go on, I will say that all of this weaving becomes a thousand times easier when you start to keybind your multi-button mouse. Life changer, by the way. Get one. For more seamless transitions in and out of bear form. The first utility spell you should be using as often as is needed is Remove Corruption. This ability can be cast in bear form on all party members and has a short cooldown. The ability to remove curses and poisons can come in clutch to alleviate healer stress during high dispel fights or help allies ignore mechanics allowing for smoother action during encounters. For example, during the Echelon encounter in the Halls of Atonement, he regularly casts Curse of Stone on all party members slowly turning them to stone, making them unable to move. Shortly thereafter, he will target another party member to use Stone Shattering Leap on. Guardian Druids can dispel the target of the leap, allowing them to freely move to many gargoyles for their destruction. Big brain plays. The next utility spell I'm going to highlight is Ursul's Vortex. Seriously, I love this ability. Aside from allowing you to kite, it can be cast in bear form during encounters where allies are targeted and pursued by CCable mobs, such as in the third boss room in Necrotic Wake, or by the Fox during the Mist Collar encounter in Mist of Tirna Scythe. This ability can quickly be dropped to rubber band enemies back to their original positions, allowing your teammate more time to clear themselves of the threat, even if they choose not to. The next ability I want to talk about utility weaving into your regular rotation is Incapacitating Roar. 
Regularly throughout dungeons, you will come across mobs that aren't casters but have abilities that you want to interrupt. These mobs need to be stunned, feared, or hard CC'd to stop these casts. As Guardian Druids, we have one of the most effective AoE interrupts in the game through the use of Incapacitating Roar. Whether interrupting the baby gargoyles on boss 2 in the Halls of Atonement, disrupting loyal beast casts in the same dungeon, or deleting mass from the raging mob into other side, Incapacitating Roar is one of your strongest utility abilities that allow Guardian Druids to truly control the pace of nearly every encounter. Lastly, I want to touch on the Soothe ability. This is another castable and bear form utility that is an absolute lifesaver. Aside from Hunters, Druids are the only class in the game that have the ability to soothe enraging mobs, and the fact that it can be done while in bear form with such a short cooldown makes it extremely valuable in a number of dungeons. Soothing multiple mobs generally requires some kiting as you need 10 seconds for the ability to come off cooldown, but as we've already discussed in this guide, we've got kiting locked down. The Gargans in the beginning of Halls of Atonement are great practice for kiting out multiple enraged mobs that require a soothe. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please make sure to hit that little thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, helps me out more than you could know. If you really enjoyed what you saw here, or maybe you just want to pick my brains about the topics we discussed today, or anything else pertaining to Guardian Druids, you can check me out over on Twitch. I'm live there most nights except for Sunday from 5 p.m. EST until about 10 to midnight. As always, guys, take care of each other, be well, and remember, we rage because we care. I'll see you guys in the next one.